another very important thing which we, we can understand by looking at the ECG is the concept of knowing the hypertrophy of the different uh, ven chambers of the heart. There are four chambers in heart, left ventricle, right ventricle, left atrium and right atrium. So just by looking at the ECG paper, we can actually calculate certain measurements which tell us whether there is a hypertrophy or different chambers of the heart or not. There are four type of hypertrophies, left ventricular hypertrophy or LVH, right ventricular hypertrophy or RVH, right atrial hypertrophy or, or AH and the left atrial hypertrophy or LAH. In order to calculate the measurements of these different chambers through the ECG paper, we should first know the height of small and the large boxes because these measurements help us better understand the presence or absence of the hypertrophy of the different chambers. Uh, on the ECG paper, there are small boxes and the large boxes. Height of one small box is one millimeter and height of one large box is 5 mm. So, when, whenever we are looking at the ECG paper and we are trying to determine if, if there is any hypertrophy of any of the chamber, there are certain measurements we take in millimeters and for that we should know the height of one small box is 1 mm and the height of one large box is 5 mm. So when we talk about uh, finding whether the NECG has got left ventricular hypertrophy or not, we are to look at the depth of the S-wave in lead V1 and V2. Whichever is the deeper one, we will select it. And then we will take its depth in millimeter. And then we also select the height of R wave in lead either V5 or V6, whichever the taller one. Then again, the taller one will be selected and its height in the millimeter will be counted. Uh, at the end of this counting, we will add them up. The depth of the S wave in lead V1 or V2 and the height of R wave in lead V5 or V6. If adding them up gives us a calculation of more than 35 millimeter of the millimeter, not millimeter of the murky. If it gives us a height of more than 35 millimeter, we call it left ventricular hypertrophy. So S wave in lead V1 or V2, whichever the deeper one and R wave in lead 5 or V6. When we add them up and the calculation goes equal to or more than 35 millimeter, we call it left ventricular hypertrophy. There are so many other ways to calculate the left ventricular hypertrophy, but this is one of the simplest one. Like if we look at this ECG paper, these are leads V1 and V2. We will select the deeper S wave where it can be lead V1 or it can be lead V2. For example, just for sake of calculation, if we take example of lead V2, this is one large box, this is two. So it's 10 millimeter plus this uh, one small box, 11 millimeter and one small box uh, higher up. So that gives us 12 millimeter depth of the S wave. And if we take lead V5 or V6, whichever has got the taller R wave, they are more or less equal. If we take this example, this is one large box almost. If we add 12 into the 5, it, uh, it's adding up gives us an answer of 17 millimeter. So this is well below the target value of 35 millimeter. So this hasn't got left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, left ventricular hypertrophy uh, happens in cases of right uh, systemic hypertension and aortic stenosis and uh, aortic uh, regurgitation and uh, mitral regurgitation. These are some examples of the left ventricular hypertrophy. We can al also calculate right ventricular hypertrophy on the ECG paper. There are two things which add up to uh, qualify for the right ventricle hypertrophy to be there in the ECG. First of all, normally everyone knows that there is a small R wave in lead V1 and a deep S wave. This is what happens in a normal V1. But in cases of the right ventricular hypertrophy to be there, there should be a tall R wave in the lead V1. If you look at this, 
this v1 has got a tall r wave but normally there is no tall r wave in the lead v1 plus there should be right axis deviation in the right axis deviation lead 1 is negative and lead avs is positive uh, so if if there are these two things present in the ecg paper uh, mm, there should be a tall r wave in the lead v1 and there should be right axis deviation we call it right ventricular hypertrophy and kind of a patients who have got this problem are the one which develop pulmonary hypertension for example asthmatic and copd are the are those who have got the primary pulmonary hypertension they are all example of the patients or the people having right ventricular hypertrophy if we take example of this patient uh, here there is no right axis deviation because lead 1 is positive and lead avf is negative so there is no right axis deviation and if we look at the lead v1 it has got a very small r wave and a deep s wave so our definition of right ventricular hypertrophy goes that there should be a tall r wave in the lead v1 and there should be right right axis deviation so this ecg hasn't got a right ventricular hypertrophy in order to simply know uh, if uh, right atrial hypertrophy is present in an ECG or not, we are to look at the rhythm lead of the ECG. Lead 2 is uh, uh, known as the rhythm lead uh, of the ECG along with the lead V1. But here to make the things very simple, we, we will take lead 2 as a rhythm lead. Normally the height of the uh, P wave uh, present in the lead 2 is less than 2.5 small boxes or less than 2.5 millimeter in height. But in cases of the right atrial hypertrophy, the height of the P wave is more than 2.5 millimeter or more than two and a half uh, small boxes. And we call it P pulmonale uh, or P P wave. For example, if you look at this P wave, it's a normal P wave. It has got a height well within the uh, range of the 2.5 millimeter or the two, two and a half small boxes. But once we look at this uh, P wave, it's a peaked p wave it's a heighted p wave it has got a height of more than 2.5 millimeter in height this is known as the p pulmonale of the right atrial hypertrophy and it 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 sort of draws its name of pulmonale from its major cause major cause of the p pulmonale or the peaked p wave in the rhythm lead is pulmonary hypertension so whenever you see a p heighted p wave in a rhythm lead which has got a height of more than two and a half boxes or 2.5 millimeter. This is a, uh, this is an indic indication that the patient has got right atrial hypertrophy and you can actually uh, sort of chase that uh, finding and uh, look into the history of the patient. Um, ask about the smoking history, having any uh, uh, respiratory problem over a long period of time and ultimately you can get patients uh, uh, HRCT and spirometry that, that can help you diagnose patient finally because pulmonary hypertension in one of, is one of the major causes of uh, right atrial hypertrophy. In this example of our ECG, this black arrow is actually pointing towards P wave and in the lead to which we call a rhythm lead and if you look closely the height of the p wave is no way more than two and half small boxes so this is well within the range of the normal p wave so we can uh, surely say the patient hasn't got a right atrial hypertrophy major causes of the right atrial hypertrophy are tricuspid valve stenosis or uh, re, uh, tricuspid regurgitation and it can be a follow-up, it can be a consequence of patient having the right ventricular hypertrophy because the ultimately uh, back pressure comes to the right atrium. So, and, and clinically talking about this uh, right atrial hypertrophy, if uh, you pause central line, there can be a falsely elevated right atrial pressure. So, this sh factor should always be kept in mind whenever dealing with the hemodynamic state of the patient based on the central venous axis uh, of the patient. Now again, in order to uh, look for the presence or absence of the left atrial hypertrophy, we turn towards the lead uh, 2, which is the rhythm lead of the ECG. Uh, normally, the P wave is actually made uh, by the simultaneous depolarization of the both right and left atrium. 
because it's so it's a very smooth and simultaneous uh, phenomena so uh, p uh, palm p wave in the lead to is a smooth nice wave less than 2.5 mm in height and and a very smooth uh, in its contours the first part is actually made by the depolarization of the right atrium and the second part is made by the depolarization of the left atrium but what happens in cases of the left atrial hypertrophy for example in cases of the uh, mitral stenosis there is a heightened portion of the p wave which is caused by the depolarization of the hypertrophied left atrium in cases of the mitral stenosis it's it generates a very uh, irregular uh, morphology of the p wave we call it the hunchback we we call it, call it uh, uh, double notched p wave and the name of this p wave is p mitral and it also draws its name from the mitral stenosis so the atrial hypertrophy in any ecg is uh, uh, sort of depicted by the presence of this uh, hunchback uh, double notched p wave first notch is because of the right atrial depolarization and when it is about to end there starts the uh, depolarization of the hypertrophied segment or hypertrophied left atrium and it generates its own uh, notch and this is known as the p mitral and uh, this the it's indicate uh, it's uh, it shows the presence of left atrial hypertrophy if we look at this uh, uh, p wave in lead uh, to once more we we'll, uh, see that the p wave morphology is very smooth the contours are equal uh, the first one and the second half of the p wave uh, the, the one go ascending and the one coming down they are equal but if there is a p uh, if the left atrial hypertrophy uh, it will not be like this the p wave morphology will change the ascending segment would be a normal one but before it starts coming down or it start descending there would be another notch added up to the morphology of the p wave that would give it a name of p mitral because it happens most of the time in the mitral stenosis that causes the left atrial hypertrophy and p mitral shows that the patient has got left atrial hypertrophy but our patient hasn't got the one so these are four types of hypertrophy whenever we look at ecg system uh, systemically systematically we can actually uh, read ecg and also try to find out whether the patient has got any hypertrophy or not